So welcome back to Fur Fighters. We just played the Temple of Gloom. So now it's time to actually get the final baby in the game and rescue Rene from the bare hell. Yep, so there's only one baby here, and this is going to be the final one in the entire game. And it's also the hardest to get by far of every single baby in the game. This is actually the baby that um, I suppose many people might end up having to skip if they end up skipping any. But this is the one that you have to get the hardest because um, it's all story related and stuff. Because this is Winnie's personal, like, youngest child that she was always carrying with her. So obviously it's a good thing to go and get it. As you can see, this is the place where all the bad bears go, so basically, yeah, it's bear hell. You can see all the bears just uh, in agony, stuck in the walls and the like. So this place is pretty dark, which I kinda like. Just jump over this bottomless flaming pit, and we miss the jump. Okay, you know what? We don't need that energy. If you're gonna be like that game, then screw it. Obviously, we're fighting against some dead bears. But, uh, you know, if you're gonna say that I don't make the jump after waiting that long, then I'm not gonna do it. Also, tokens aren't an issue in this level. There are actually tokens here, but they're all going to be in one location, so we don't have to worry about it. It's just all about actually reaching the end. And yes, there are going to be a lot of dead bears here. So this is probably the hardest level in the whole game. I would say it's definitely the hardest. We're probably going to die quite a few times. Let's uh, set that on fire. That's actually for a puzzle we have to do. We should try and pick up all this ammunition. We're gonna need it. Yeah, we really could do with some health. Quite badly. I have to take this a little bit carefully. But since this is for bear hell, um, we're only actually going to be fighting bears here. So we don't have to worry about getting all these ducks firing rocket launchers at us and stuff like that. Or not ducks, uh, peacocks, that's the one. Then again, I'd be surprised if there's any peacocks even left alive at this point, like General Vigo keeps killing them. Even when he says that he has no more lackeys left, he still kills that peacock. It's like, come on, Vigo. There's a reason why you don't have any more lackeys, you keep killing them. I understand your lackeys are useless, but you know, just you don't have to literally kill them all yourself. Let the fur fighters do it. The guy's like, oh yeah! You have no idea what sick beats are behind this wall! Uh, we're getting enough ammunition to keep us stable at this point. And there's a door here. Odd. We're gonna have to unlock that door at some point. And that gun that we wanted just flew off the edge of the level. I'm not gonna go and get that one. 
see if there's nothing that direction, so let's go this direction. So the whole point of this area is actually to light up all of these beacon things that we've been seeing. We haven't tell we haven't actually found the guy who tells us to do this yet, but this is what we have to do. As you can see, we're getting these like little um, imps getting drawn to them because there's someone somewhere being hounded by those imps. It's sort of like the earlier level of the furry forest where we had to um, light all the lamps so that those dragonflies stopped hounding the guy. In fact, let's not uh, mince birds, it's exactly the same. It is the same puzzle. It's just you shoot the thing instead of press a button. Which again is why Furry Forest kind of sucks, because it was just a level they added into this, like, ex um, director's cut version of the game, and it really just wasn't very good. There was no point to it. It was really underwhelming. Sure, you got the neutron bomb, like, one area before you were supposed to get it, but, you know, it's not even a very good weapon anyway, because you can never have that much ammo for it. So we're doing pretty good, you know, we're doing good in bare hell, we've got um, 100 health, got loads of ammo, doing pretty good, can we go around this way? We can actually, but there's going to be nothing there. So this bit's actually kind of annoying, um, Because, as well as being able to crush you from the front, these things can also crush you from behind. I don't know if this one can, but I know the next one can. So, uh, it's really annoying, so you could accidentally die there and waste all your progress. Yeah, because we could have got crushed then, and it would have been really annoying. But yeah, we're, we're doing good in bare hell. As long as if we don't get killed by that thing due to it being uh, really annoying, then we'll be fine. So we're going to have to go back through it, so there's always a chance we might die and then have to restart this entire section. So that's definitely the hardest part, as well as obviously trying to make that jump to get to that and energy weaponry, which just plain didn't work. Uh, so now we've just got to find where the next area is. So um, basically, put we've gone everywhere except for where we're supposed to go, which was where we're supposed to go first. So uh, you know that's pretty good. I guess this is where we're supposed to go. No, because that's the entrance. I remember that because that's where the um, annoying bullshit uh, energy platform was. I don't think there's any shotgun guys here, I think it's just pistol and uh, bomb guys. Yep, here's the guy. That's no way to treat a beaver. Sorry mate. <laughs> yep, so uh, this is about like a Hellraiser version of the beaver. I know you're looking for that dog and the little puppy. Well, they lie beyond the door to nowhere. Now, if you don't mind, I've got eight more souls to get through today. And I won't get my beating unless I finish them. Oh, sorry, mate. Yep, so that was the guy who's being hounded, and he's supposed to tell us, Oh, no, I'm being hounded. Can you please light these fires? But, um, obviously we did all that first because I didn't come this direction. But luckily, it's not one of those annoying things where you have to talk to him before you can do it. No, you are allowed to do it and then go talk to him. Yeah, so beavers torture bears here is how it basically works. And there's the energy weaponry again, because I keep going the wrong direction. 
Now I know these guys look like they're being tortured, but it really looks like we're just headbanging. They're really, really into the music here. Like, all I can hear is just atmospheric stuff, but behind that wall there's like just some really loud, like... I go that way again. Just dubstep thing or something, they just really love it. I suppose rock is more fitting. Are we going the same direction the second time? Okay, let's go this direction. I'm good at directions. Also, yeah, there's going to be another platform there, again with stuff on it, but like we learned last time, that does not work, so I'm not going to even try it. We've made a lot of progress in these 10 minutes, and I'm just going to go for it. I'm out of here. Blade losers, you could all get go get tortured for like a... I mean, I've already killed you, I can't really do anything else to you. I'm the one who sent you here. Right, there's the door to nowhere over there, so let's go to it. Good. Um, I feel like I got scabbed. Okay, let's go into that door. Yeah, okay, that worked. So, um, this is Bear Hell. Well, Bear Hell with Bear Hell's waiting room, I suppose. Or should I should call it the place where all bad bears go, waiting room. Yeah. So, what we're looking for here is um, actually. Because uh, we need to look for a door with a picture on it. Oh, look at that. That's a door with Rico's picture on it, but you can't go in there. Uh -oh. And we just wasted all the rest of our ammo, but that's okay. That's a Chang door. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be a door here for every character. And even though we're currently playing as Rufus, we're not actually supposed to go into Rufus' door. Ah, there you see. The Tweak's door is actually already open. So we're going to basically witness everybody's personal hell. Okay, so this is Tweak's personal hell. And his personal hell is that he's still an egg. He hasn't actually been born yet, and he's fallen from his mother's nest. So we need to go and get back up there. So some of these platforms will bounce us, some of them will spin us around, some of them will tilt. But we're almost there, we just need to get to the nest and then we're done. And then we'll move on to the next character's personal hell. There you go. Huh. What? Not fluff. Yeah, so I suppose that's... Ooh, there's goodies in there. That's probably a reference to something like The Shining, but I haven't actually seen it, you know, so I wouldn't know. I'm guessing it is, because this looks like um, the hotel from it. So I'm guessing that it would have been something like the, um, a load of blood came out of the lift or something like that, because obviously Fluff is blood in this game. But I don't know. Probably isn't. Okay, so it's not this direction. So we're just going and looking around for the uh, next character's personal health that's currently open. <laughs> right, there it is. <laughs> and this is Bungalow's personal hell. He's just uh, stuck in the outback. 
And this is where every single one of the 100 tokens is, so let's just go get them. I just want to get up there again, never mind. I've been chased by these things, but in Tweak's area they um, automatically spawn, so I don't know if that's just going to happen here as well. I suppose it will at least buy us some time, since we're not currently sitting where he spawns. Ah, oh, there's so many invisible enemies. Nope, I'm out of there. Later. Yay, we got all the tokens. Yeah, so this level actually forces you to get all 100 tokens. But obviously they're all easy to get because you're forced to get them in more than one area. So uh, where is the door? It's up there, okay. Let's go get it. <laughs> yeah, sadly you do come out of here with the same health that you go in, so uh, this is going to be a bit bad if we end up not being able to find the correct door to go to anytime soon. No, it's fine, we got some pet chow. <laughs> And here's the next door. Let's see whose personal hell we're going to now. It's Chang's. And this one uh, is probably my personal hell as well. It's having to deal with levels that you can't see where you're going. Basically, this is uh, Dizzy in a nutshell, the old game with the egg. It was like a platforming adventure puzzle game. But it would keep using this area where you couldn't see where you were going. We would call it stuff like the Room of uh, Blinding Steel and stuff like that. This one is a lot easier than, uh, than those though, at least. Oh, can you... apparently you can find me, but that'll be one. Right, let's go upstairs. Yeah, obviously that wasn't going to be a straight one, was it? Yes, yeah, so anyone who's played, um, let's see, which ones used it? I know definitely Spellbound Dizzy did it, because that's my favourite one of them, and Matt did it. Um, also, Fantasy Dizzy. Fantasy World Dizzy, that's the one. That did it as well. I'm not sure if any of the others did it, but those two definitely did, and those two can uh, go to their own personal hells for doing them, because that is really terrible game design. You do not want to do those rooms of blinding steel and the like. They're just, they're bad. If you've never played the games, trust me on it, they're just bad. You don't want to.
the rest of the game though is great, you know. As long as if you like the uh, really aged and flawed old adventure game style where you could die easily and uh, lose all your progress. So this is going to be Rico's personal hell now. And his is basically that he's living back in New Quack City. And it's completely overrun with crime. Shoot some bombs in here to kill all of these guys. And now we get ourselves a flamethrower, which is going to be quite a handy weapon, but it's also going to be really annoying because uh, now we're not going to be able to switch to our ice weapon automatically or as easily on uh, when we do it on purpose. So this bit is going to be really annoying because there's going to be loads of respawning enemies constantly. And they're all going to have shotguns so we can quickly whittle down our health with the fact that they're constantly just respawning on us. Why did that not destroy it? Come on, game. Alright, finally. Alright, so I'm just getting out of here. I'm just going to try circle strafing around a bit. And just try and avoid all damage because there are way too many enemies back there. I take any of the ammunition I can get, but I'm definitely not stopping. This is going to be a gauntlet. I'm just going to run through it. But sadly, we do need to keep stopping because of the the annoying target walls like that. Wait, what's back there? Oh no, it's the same ones before, I think. Right, we're out of here. I'm gone. Blade losers. Yeah, I'm not staying. Let's uh, throw some bombs, just to scare them away. That'll buy us a little bit of time as we carry on running. There's a tiger wall over there, but I'm not stopping for it. There's probably going to be a secret behind there, like a place to upgrade uh, Rico's melee attack and stuff like that, and it is just not worth doing. This is Rico's personal hell. He doesn't have time to go around and do side quests. That's his heaven, not hell. It's like, oh yeah, what do I want to do when I'm dead? I want to just kind of do side quests all the time. So I love doing that stuff. Right, well that's where we're going into next. It looks like it's Juliet's. And Juliet's personal hell is that she's stuck in a dinner party she, she hates. With all her friends. Actually, it automatically goes to ice still. That's handy. Yeah, she doesn't like dinner parties. Despite being French. Oh, well, we're completely out of health now. Oh, 
Well, we're almost done with them. There we go. You know what? I can't blame you. I really can't blame you. Dinner parties are the worst. Let's not do them. Nice mirror up there, though. Let's have a look at the paintings. Oh, Vigo. I'm, I've seen enough. Actually, no, let's have a look at some old paintings. What is that even? I don't even get what that's supposed to be referencing, so screw it. I'm done. Now, but have I done everyone yet? Am I now up to Rufus? Because if I am, then that's good. And we're now completely out of that weaponry. Yeah, like I said, we really wanted the, um... What? Wait, what? Huh. Okay. Uh -oh. I didn't know that existed. Well, we just learned to cheat, so um, I guess we'll have a look at that after this part. Uh -oh. oh yeah, I've already seen this cutscene, but I suppose he wants to show it again. Oh, the fluff. It's so fluffy. It's so fluffy and beautiful. Right, that's the next one. Yep, and this is the final part of uh, the bad place, which will be Rufus's personal help. And as mentioned previously in the game, and as his uh, music has also hinted to, he used to be a war dog, so his personal hell is actually back at the war that he previously had against Vigo. So there's going to be a huge tank there, and we have to destroy it. And these guys are wearing uh, German outfits, so... I don't know, I guess they're saying that uh, Vigo is the German in this way. Because obviously he's from uh, Scotland, so that's why he's got like an English outfit. So I suppose, you know, that's just this alternate universe, World War One or World War Two. So we've got one stick of dynamite, so um, we'll be using that soon. But we need to get another one. Okay, apparently that window doesn't want to budge. Eesh. So if you go behind here, it should start throwing out bombs, but it didn't. No, now you can hear it. So this part is where I usually, um, well, where I originally completely screwed up on this game, because I just didn't know how to do this level at all. And it is quite, um quite difficult to do, to be honest, because it is a little bit cryptic. But basically, what we need to do is to use this dynamite to blow up the tank. And that bit seems obvious, but how exactly you use it is a little bit more vague. It's probably one of the most... I'd say it's definitely the most difficult puzzle in the entire game, yeah. Okay, I guess I'm not supposed to light that here. I thought I was, weirdly enough. I'm not allowed to climb up? Come on, game. There we go. So, to start with, we need to plant that dynamite there so we can blow up this bridge while the tank's going over it. And the game won't actually let you blow up the bridge by accident before it gets there. It is um, at least that there. And the game never really lets you permanently lose anything that's important. It's 
So now we're just going to wait for the tank to come back round and then we're going to jump on this plunger. There's a dogfight happening up there. Yeah, so there's a load of artillery and uh, lights and stuff going on. Hello. Hello. There we go. But that doesn't actually destroy the tank, it just boots it. And this is the bit that I kept getting stuck on, because I didn't notice what you were actually supposed to do. Also, there's a, a big anti-air platform up there. Because I got stuck here for ages, and I had no idea what you're supposed to do, but the answer's actually pretty obvious when you think about it, so I'm not sure if I was just being a complete idiot, or if it is actually just that vague. But now that it's rooted there, we can now go up to it. If we find a way upstairs, that is. And get attacked by a respawning enemy. That's exactly what I meant to happen. No, what we can actually do is... The top is now open, and I thought you were supposed to jump up there and plant the dynamite inside it, but no, you're just supposed to shoot some cluster bombs into it. It's literally as easy as that. I was really overthinking it with the fact that you got a second stick of dynamite, and that's sort of the problem, is you get the second stick of dynamite before you need to use it. Because a second tank will come through, and on this one you use the stick of dynamite. So I was possibly sure that it was just for one tank, and I somehow had to get on top of it, so I kept trying to jump onto it, but you can never make the jump. Right, and you would be able to just about make the jump, so you'd think, oh, perhaps I am just doing it wrong. Uh -huh. Now, where is that tank? Which way about is it going? Oh, screw it, you need to die. Is we need to find where this new tank is? Oh, then again, I think it's because it's in the next area, yeah, never mind. Obviously, it can't patrol this area because there's a huge uh, destroyed vehicle in the way. Okay. Oh, never mind, that's the anti air cannon that's firing. Right, so it's just gone past me. Oh, never mind. Ah, no, I'm being shot from behind. Okay, I was going to say never mind because I didn't want to get killed by these guys, but it seems like I can kill them anyway, so... Now we definitely need help before we can do anything. There has to be a help pick up somewhere. Come on, game. There we go. Now we're safe. So we need to wait for this vehicle to go past us. And then get up behind it, because here there's a dynamite image just behind it with this one. There we go. And now you're finally out of bear hell. Or the bad place, rather. Now you have to go find where that door is. So yeah, that's a bit that I kept getting stuck on. I could just not figure out how to destroy the first tank because I was positive I was supposed to jump onto it. But obviously I was mistaken. 
And it looks like the exit isn't around here. Never mind. Let's find where the exit is. There we go. And here is the final baby in the game. Frederick. But sorry we haven't been able to find Winnie yet, which is... ...bad. And we got a cheat for rescuing all the babies. So sadly, we weren't able to find our wife, but at least we were able to rescue every single baby in the game. So we've completed all the babies objective, which was the main objective I had for the game, so... Let's go and rescue our wife. And that is the bad place complete with 153 kills, all 100 tokens because you had to, and 1 out of 1 babies. So when we come back we're going to rescue both Winnie and Mei. And then we're going to go and take on the ego. So until then, be lovely to each other. And don't go into bear hell, it isn't very good.